Every year, flatbed trucks from all over the country roll into California's Central Valley. You might not recognize the cargo at first, but if you listen, you might get a better idea. They arrive in the dark to keep them calm, but in the daytime, an estimated one million beehives are unpacked and placed amongst the state's blooming almond orchards. These little workers have one very important job, to cross-pollinate California's almond trees. Fifth generation almond farmer Jim Huddleston has been watching these bees do their work for decades. They like to come out in the morning as we try to set the beehives where the sun will hit the hive in the morning to help warm them up a little bit. Uh, they, they, uh, if there's a wind's blowing like right now, we got a little bit of chill in the air with the wind. It's probably slowing them down. They're probably going, ah, I don't know if I want to go out. And they're kind of hesitant. But uh, usually from about oh, 11 o'clock to about 3, 2, 3 in the afternoon with the warmest part of the day, they're just flying really strong on a nice warm sunny day. So, uh, and then you can smell it in the air. You can smell the pollen moving and yeah. you can go out here to buzzing in the trees. So, you know, they're active and, get, and getting the crop set. This well choreographed annual event is the biggest money maker for more than half of the country's commercial beekeepers. Last fall, these orchards yielded about 1.5 billion pounds of nuts, equal to about 90% of the world's annual supply. Oren Johnson is a beekeeper, and his family has been in the business since the 1950s. Let me go check one here and see where a good one is to open. Bees like to, of course, start from the hive and go to the closest source, but they will work out up to two miles without any problem. They have been known to go as far as five miles. It's a uh, two-sided relationship. The almonds need the bees to set a crop, and the beekeepers over the years have become dependent on that paycheck from the almond pollination. It's, it, we kind of coexist, or, or we're both, we can't exist without each other. The almond orchards around Modesto are bursting with flowers this time of year. It takes about two beehives to pollinate one acre of trees, and it's 660,000 acres of almonds in California. That means about 20 billion visiting bees. And by the end of the blooming season, this bee population will have doubled. Huddleston explains how pollination works. In the flower itself, it has a center tube for a pollen tube, and it's usually a little bit longer, and that's where the pollen connects, and it'll draw down that tube. The thing is, the pollen has to be connected from a different type of tree. That's why the bees are so important, that we have to have this pollen transfer from tree to tree. So we have two or three varieties in fields, most farmers, and that they, the connection of the two makes the nut happen. To create a single almond, an almond blossom needs as many as a dozen bee visits. But these bees don't come cheap. Growers pay as much as $150 for a single hive. But Huddleston says despite the price, the bees are worth the money. The, there's different options to try to mix the pollen in the orchard with helicopters, or there's different sprays that people put out to, to attract bees or makes the pollen and you can spray pollen but the bee good old bees that seem to be the best they do the natural way and uh, we kind of stick with the old ways and that tried and true because uh, I need to make my living and I want to make sure it's going to work. Natural might be a little bit of a stretch. Left on their own most beehives would actually be weak this time of year. We're just coming out of winter here we're not even in officially into spring and due to the almond industry's demand for strong hives, we artificially stimulate them early by feeding, feeding pollen supplements to give them a April or May beehive in February. Plus, Johnson and others think offering bees just one pollen source at a time, in this case almond blossoms, might be contributing to what's known as colony collapse disorder. That's the mysterious phenomenon that's caused up to 90% of bees in some hives to die spontaneously in recent years. This in turn has caused a bee shortage that's driven up hive rental prices for almond growers. Meanwhile, global demand for almonds has gone through the roof. In response, California growers have doubled the number of almond acres in production since 1981, which in turn has depressed prices. And that's not all almond growers are facing this year. There's also a drought in California and a sagging global economy. Our problem is, is the economy has changed our industry. Uh, the world economy is depressed kind of now. We, our prices dropped in about half. So yeah. instead of making $1.80 to $2 a pound, we're making about a dollar or less. So 
uh, we're trying to make the, all the overhead costs, which bees are part of, but it's important you have to have it to set your crop. So it's, uh, it makes it tight. Despite this, Huddleston's not about to give up. The thing is, when you become a tree farmer, you have to commit to something for a period of time. You can't say three years into it, eh, I don't like that, go do something else. You get into it, it's 30 years that you're into this one field. So uh, you have to take care of it and, and, and monitor it, and, and it's your life that you spend here. So next few years will be interesting, see how things go. But I'm in for the long haul, so make it work. That's the male. Okay. No stingers. And next up for the honeybees? For some of them, the work continues. They'll be traveling north to Washington State for the apple bloom. For Time.com, I'm Kate Pickert.